we're Robin and Steve. Last episode, we just arrived at Shooten Island to shelter from the storm. With the first storm due to hit in the afternoon, we took a walk up Bear Hill. I was expecting an okay walk, but this was unforgettably gorgeous and a very good workout for my recovering knee. We were advised to not even attempt this walk in wet weather. Quote, the rocks are like soap. We could see the storm brewing. It was time to head back. This was the perfect place to be stuck until the storm passed. We'd been told there was a dead whale washed up on the beach. We were ready to see any whale, dead or alive. What we did find was a dead albatross. A dead seal. paper nautilus shell and this if I only had a brain I think the whale had washed away in the storm with the spring's tides once it was calm we could see our anchor chain way down below And at night we could see fish in the torchlight. With a gap between storms, we head off with a dolphin toward Coles Bay to get some groceries and fuel. It was quite a long way to carry fuel and groceries and a fairly wavy kayak trip with a full load back to our boat sail to Coles Bay was quick, back exactly the way. but we had to tack oh. all the way back, slow, but made entertaining because we were joined by a bird, a juvenile Pacific gull, who wouldn't leave us alone. at Shooten Island, it was my birthday. For my birthday, we went to the waterfall. On the way back, the track took us along the creek bed. Pointy Hill is Bear Hill that we'd climbed a few days earlier. A change in the wind meant that we had to head over to the other side, to Brian's Corner. After appreciating the middens of the Palawa Kani people, Wall prints and glassy seas, we rested for the long passage to Cape Barren Island, 114 nautical miles away. We set off on a cloudy morning past the fiery rocks of the Freycinet Peninsula. Warning, shaky camera work ahead. I'm shocked. <laughs> 
It's a seal, not a shark. More shaky camera work coming up. I do get excited when I see dolphins. We've never had this many dolphins join us before. What a treat. <laughs> Bishano. We could anchor close enough to paddle ashore and get fuel. So that we could cross Bass Strait with full tanks of diesel and some to spare. It was a rocky walk with full jerry cans of diesel, but still about the most handy petrol station we've come across. Although it was pretty cold, Steve was determined to still wear shorts. We take turns doing three hour watches on these longer passages. On Steve's watch, it was sunset, and it was a cracker of a sunset. We didn't have much wind, even when the sun rose. But once Cape Barren Island was in sight, the wind sprung up. The waves got bigger, and we got wet. Once we got there, sleep deprived, we found out we were sinking. So this morning uh, we arrived at Cape Barren Island um, after a pretty long haul all the way through from Shooting Island down near Coles Bay. Uh, and when we got here we were both pretty tired because we did an overnighter um, and we noticed that the bilge was full of water. Now it's normally pretty dry. Um, what did happen last night is we looked, sounded like we ran across a big patch of kelp and um, threw the motor into a bit of a vibration so I suspect it's leaking through the prop shaft gland. Um, so when I had to have, went to have a look, um, that's one problem, but I uh, found that the exhaust had blown away. So if I flip the camera, and we'll go and have a look. I don't know if you can see this. Here's, oh, here's the exhaust, and that shouldn't come apart like that. So much joy. Sailing's great and Cape Barren Island is beautiful, but it's always just fixing shit somewhere nice. So I was clearly a bit fatigued and not thinking straight when I recorded that last clip about the prop shaft leaking. Um, having a bit more of a think about it, there's no way that we could ever lose or gain that much water through the prop shaft and subsequent testing has shown that it's only leaking one or two drops per minute when it's running. Um, so that's not our problem. What actually happened was um, our engine, like many boat motors, is cooled by raw seawater. Um, so the seawater comes in from the seacock and cools a matrix with um, freshwater cooling water and then is discharged out through the exhaust gas and the exhaust is what pushes it out of the boat. Because our exhaust was broken below the, um, the cooling water entrance into the exhaust system, all that cooling water that was pumped by the engine was just going straight into the bilge, causing us to sink. So um, I'm glad we've found that out and rectified it, and now we're not sinking anymore. Yay! Steve ate a tin of baked beans, modified the tin, and clamped it firmly back onto the exhaust just to get us across the Bass Strait. And 
spoiler alert, we made it. Once the engine was repaired, we could go for a walk. True Wana is the traditional name for Cape Barren Island. In 2005, the Tasmanian government returned this island to the Aboriginal people. As is usually the case up until then, colonisers and their descendants made a tragic mess of everything. It was rough here, quite hard to sleep, but if calm, we could still get ashore. Visitors need to seek permission from the local Aboriginal community before venturing inland, but are free to explore the coastline. Plastic, even here. Say no to balloons, kids, and to plastic, and say no to drugs. Again, middens are the kind of litter we like. On some days we'd been boat bound here due to the weather. So once I got ashore, I really like to practice my dancing and my handstands. It was nearly time to cross the Bass Strait. Time for some quick repairs with the easy stitcher. Here's a little demo of Steve repairing our sail cover. Poke it through. Thread the string through the loop. Pull the easy stitcher back and repeat. It's not pretty, but it's strong. The weather turned super nasty, so we had to battle our way around the corner. It was sounding like an okay weather window to cross the Bass Strait, so in the morning we were off. As we were heading north, we bid our southern friends farewell. The winds picked up and they stayed up. It proved impossible to get rest. No matter where we went, there was something to keep us awake. The boat was seriously heeled over. And no matter where we were, things were swinging, crashing, banging, with waves breaking over the boat. We only ever filmed during calmer times. And even then, we needed to hang on with two hands to stay standing up. It was a two-person job to even make a cup of coffee. Oh, good morning. Alice, watch. Oh, um, a bit tippy, a little bit spray, like a bit of salt shower going on. Um, windy, and thankful that we have three reefs in the sail and no jib. Oh, we've got a jib. And an auto help. Yeah, who's steering this boat? Oh. <laughs> no one. It's doing whatever it wants. So have conditions improved, you think? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. The wind's still quite big. Um, it's nice because it's light, so it feels a bit better. Um, this camera sure makes it look nice. 23.2 yeah. knots. And, um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be letting off yet. So, 
I just hope the waves don't get bigger. And hopefully, when once some land is around, it will be blocking some of the wind. But that's a long way off. All right, I'll make coffee. Great. Thank you. Our expected winds of 10 to 20 knots turned out to be 20 to 30 knots. Footage doesn't do justice to how it really felt. Imagine this for over 30 hours, with a lot of it being in pitch black. We gained a new respect for our boat, Rakali. Join us next time as we start to explore New South Wales and get hit by a once in 100 year flood event before heading north to where I grew up to visit my family. If you like our videos, press subscribe or don't, I'm not your dad.